Thank you, ladies. That was beautiful. Good morning. It is great to see you this morning. We're glad that you're here. When you came in, you should have picked up the bulletin. Inside that bulletin are upcoming announcements and activities you'll want to be aware of. Make sure you take a moment, look through there. There is a prayer sheet in there for our uh, youth event next week. We'd encourage you to be praying for us if you would, please. Uh, also, as you know, there's a connection card attached to that bulletin. Take a minute, fill that connection card out, let us know you're here, and uh, you can place that in the offering plate as it comes by. If you'd like information about the church, you can mark that on there. Also, please, if there's anything going on in your life or your family's life or some friends that we can be praying about, would you share those prayer requests with us? That's on the back of that connection card. And uh, let us know what we can be praying about, and we'll look forward to what God does in answer to all of those prayers. We want to begin this morning by going to the Lord in prayer together. So will you join me? Father God, as we come before you this morning, we are grateful and thankful for the opportunity of worship and celebration, of the opportunity of gathering together with like-minded friends and family to worship and adore you. Lord, this is, this is all about you. We have come here to lift your name on high, to proclaim what an awesome God you are. So easily, Lord, we are drawn in the world's approach of it all being about us. But this morning, Lord, I pray that you would just calm our spirits, still our hearts for just a moment, to know that you are here, that you desire time with us, that you want to interact with us here this morning, that you have something important to share with each and every one of us this day. So prepare our hearts for what you want to say to us. Open our minds to receive your word through song and through the pro proclamation of your word this morning, that it might take root in our life and grow and produce a fruit. Lord, we just ask right now that you be lifted on high in our presence and that we would be ready for what you have for us, that we would be changed when we leave this place today because we have been in your presence. So receive now our worship, for you are our holy Lord. And we want to proclaim it boldly. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Mike? Let's stand together as we sing, Holy is the Lord.
God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are As we sing many of our songs that, that we've sung many times, we kind of get familiar with them and maybe don't be singing without really thinking a lot about them. As I was going back through this song and looking at it and kind of dissecting it, I was looking at the, the verses. The first verse talks about the good times of life. The second verse talks about the bad times. Third verse, good times. Fourth verse, bad times, kind of back and forth. And we all, I mean, that's what life is. It, it includes both good and bad. But through the good and the bad, as this song is talking about and explains, and as what we need to do as Christians, believers, is to give God praise through it all, through the good, through the bad, no matter what's going on, give him our praise. Let's sing this song together. Blessed be your name in the land.
Father God, we just we want to thank you for the opportunity to come and gather today and worship you. And we pray that as we give these tithes and offerings that you will bless them and give us the wisdom and discernment to use them for your glory. Thank you, Father, for this day. And we pray all these things in your son's loving name. Amen. Amen. 1 John chapter 4, verses, verse 4 says, You, dear children, are from God and, and, and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. This song is called Same Power. I invite you to sing if you know it. If not, just follow the words along and, and really listen the chorus says, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us, lives in you, and lives in me. I can see the waters raging at my feet I can feel the breath of those surrounding me I can hear the sound of nations rising up we will not be overtaken we will not be overcome I can walk down this dark and painful Children singing out, we will not be. 
Okay, I may not do it quite right. Take your right hand, kind of hold it like this, and come across the same, is that it? The same power. And then the other one that was the greatest one. Victory. That's you and I. That's for us. We need to live it. We need to own it. We need to not live in fear, but live by the power. The power. The same power. What caused Jesus to come out of the grave... We don't have time for all of this, but when, I hope you realize that when that happened, when God sent that power down to resurrect His one and only Son out of that tomb, it spilled over into all the tombs around that area. Jesus wasn't the only one that came walking out of the grave that day. Can you imagine that Sunday was the day after the Sabbath? You're having family time. And all of a sudden you look out the window. And you see people who have been gone for I don't know how long walking down the street that you knew. 
That's the power of the resurrection that is at work in us. That does allow us that victory if we choose to live in it. But it's a choice that we must make. And it's a choice that I encourage us to make daily in how we live. Yesterday, I shared in a life celebration that revealed what a man spent his life building in the heritage of his family. Every day, we see a fight in our country to either build on who we are or cancel what has been built to try and build something anew. We face the choices as followers of Jesus as to what we will invest our lives building and what power we'll use to do it. And while we do have some responsibilities relating to our community, to our state, and to our nation, our primary consideration must be the building of the kingdom of God. That's what we're here to be about. That's what we're called to do and to be as a people following Jesus. That we are building the kingdom of God with His power at work within us. You know, from the beginning of time, we have faced this choice of God's way or our way. We face temptations daily as to whether we will go God's way or our way. And, and let, me, let me just be clear. The choice is not, is God going to make me do it or is the devil going to make me do it? The choice is, what are you going to do? It's within your power and authority to choose. God gave each and every one of us the free will to choose to do what is right or to choose to do what is wrong. And it falls solely on us. It doesn't matter what your family is doing. It doesn't matter what your neighbor is doing. It doesn't matter what the rest of the country is doing. You face a choice. Will you do what is right or will you do what is wrong? What are you going to build with your life? What is it going to accomplish in all the days of your life? What will they say on that day when they remember you, when you are gone? What will they talk about that you have built? Your way or God's way? And this morning, that's our consideration. I'd like you to open to a passage that we have looked at before many times, but this morning I want to take a little different approach. Genesis chapter 11, we begin with verse 1. It's early in our history, his story about what God is doing with his creation. He has blessed and he has encouraged his followers and his people. But they, just like us, face the same choice, God's way or our way. Genesis 11, we begin with verse 1 in chapter 11. Now the whole earth used the same language and the same words. It came about as they journeyed east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they used, for brick, or they used brick for stone, and they used tar for mortar. They said, come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven. And let us make for ourselves a name. Otherwise, we will be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. The Lord said, behold, they are one people, and they all have the same language. And this is what they began to do, and now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the whole earth, 
and they stopped building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. Would you pray with me? Father God, as we enter your word this morning, I pray that you would give wisdom and discernment, that we might understand what what you want of us this day. Lord, we, we entered here this morning with a variety of thoughts in our mind. We come this morning, hopefully, in anticipation of encountering a mighty God who loves us, but also a mighty God who wants to be involved in our lives daily. And we have taken control of many things in our lives that maybe we need to stop and talk with you a little bit more about. We've taken actions that we've failed to stop and consider what, what you're wanting to do in our lives. Lord, we're investing our lives in building things, but help us to stop right now and determine what it is that we're going to invest our lives in building, whether it will last whether, or whether it will be like the hay and stubble that is burned away in the end. Speak to each one of us right now, Lord. Help us to live in the power of the resurrection with the victory that you have promised us. By building with our lives that which will last for an eternity. Show us your ways and how we can be directly involved with them. Will you please, we plead, by the power and the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to give you a picture here. I want us to just kind of walk through this and get a little picture of what we're talking about. Very simple message for us to consider this morning. But I want you to catch the beginning of this. It says, the whole earth. Now the whole earth used the same language and the same words. Recognize that we're living in a different time than what this was. This is coming on the heels if you'll look in your scripture, on the heels of the flood. Now, I'm not saying it's just a few days after the flood. This is a few generations after the flood. But how long does it take for us to forget? Well, it doesn't really take very long, does it? God can do amazing things in our life, and a week later we may get worried about something and forget that God took care of something even bigger just a week ago. But the immediacy of the moment sometimes takes over in our lives, and we forget. But I want you to recognize when it talks about the whole earth, these are the descendants of Noah, his three sons and their wives, replenishing the population of the earth. You'll see the rest of chapter 11 talks about the descendants of Shem. The end of chapter 10 gives us some of the descendants of of the three of Noah's sons, the earth is being replenished after all mankind was lost in the flood with the exception of these eight individuals. Have you ever thought of that responsibility? All of God's creation put into your hands to begin again. You know, we talk a lot about Noah's challenge of having to build an ark in the middle of a desert when everybody's laughing at him. Of collecting all those animals and taking care of them. Being a master builder, being a master zookeeper, being being the, the, the father, the husband, and all of these things. But can you imagine the responsibility that was placed upon him when God said, here it is. I am going to end all of this garbage. I'm going to start over with you and your three sons and their wives. That's a pretty heavy responsibility. Not much heavier, though, 
than what I believe God is doing in this day with you and I. We have faced some very unusual things over the past six months. We have faced some situations where we weren't here. It was just a month ago I stood here proclaiming God's word to maybe 10 people. My family and those who were sending the video out to you and playing the music and Mike leading. Because we could not gather together. And I think God meant that as we talked about that God meant that as a wake up call for us. It was time for the church to return being the church. It was time for us to step up our game and be what God has expected us to be as the church, building the kingdom of God. Rather than a fellowship of people gathering together for a variety of reasons. And he's called us to return to that. And we have the choice of what we're going to build. At this point in time, it is several generations after the flood, the, the, the population has been growing, but it's the whole earth. God's still, God's still dealing with one specific group here. He's got them all together. They, they, haven't, they haven't spread out so far that you've got people doing different things in different places, and that's what we see here. Just a few generations from the flood, and what do they do? Well, there are three things that they say here that I want, you to, I want you to catch. Write it down if you would. The first is we're going to build for ourselves a city. Okay? That doesn't seem like a problem, does it? We're going to build for ourselves a city. A place for us to reside. A place for us to, to do commerce, exchange things. Civilization, if you will. Not so bad. Then it says we're going to build for ourselves a tower. Why? Well, it says here why they're building the tower. A tower whose top will reach into heaven. Now, is that a good or a bad thing? Well, in itself, if you just take that phrase, you could play it either way. And, and I say that because I want you to understand something. The fact that they had one language is important, but I want you to think about the language that you speak and how well we communicate it. I love you. What did I just say? Well, you heard the words, but what did they mean? See, it's not just the language that we're looking at here. Because we have problems communicating, even speaking the same language, of knowing what each other actually means. Oh, I could make a case here. We, we want to build for ourselves a tower to reach into the heaven. Why? Because we want to be closer to God. I mean, isn't that what we want? We want to be closer to God. Couldn't I make a case for that? Those words by themselves could, could be taken that way. Or they could be used manipulatively that way for another purpose. See, we're a devious people. We're a sinful people. And we can use our language and allow temptation to cause us to misuse it and, and cause misunderstanding. But it all comes down to the third thing, the last thing that is said here. And that is, we will make for ourselves a name. 
Now let me, let me share something that I need us to understand well. Make for ourselves a name. How, how easily entangling that can be. Who are we? We are gathered here in this place today to worship and celebrate a mighty God who loves us. A God of power and might. A God of love and mercy and grace. Who are we? Well, we have, we have a few choices. We can be the First Baptist Church of Richmond, Missouri. And we can make a name for ourselves. We can build a big tower that stands tall in the city that we live in to draw attention to this place. Or we could be the children of God gathering together to represent Him building the kingdom in this community. See, this is just a tool. You're the church. We together are the church. It is so easy for us to get pulled in even when it's... It, it, you know, you can, make it, you can make it sound so good. I mean, I, and I have said this, and I apologize if I have brought it across in the wrong way, but I want, I want this community to know about First Baptist Church of Richmond. Not because we have a beautiful spire standing taller than just about anything else in town or, or big pillars across the front. Not because we have a beautiful facility that can accommodate all that God wants to do for us, but because of the people of God who are here and what God is doing in the individual lives of these people. There are things that happen here that you're a part of that, that you don't even know about. You as a church family had the opportunity this week to help a family in desperate need. But most of you don't know that. And you don't necessarily need to know that other than that's who we are. We want to be involved in helping people and bringing them into the kingdom of God. To make a name for ourselves sometimes sounds like a good thing. But the question becomes, what name are we pushing away when we do that? And the whole earth here, as we've talked about, I've preached about once before, one of the things that, that we've talked about is the fact that they baked bricks and they used bricks in place of stone. That was a specific statement here. God's, God's creation wasn't good enough. We had to make our own. And that's what they were going through. Why did they do this? Why, why did they head out east? Why did they find this plain? Why did they decide to build a city, build for themselves a city, and build for themselves a tower, and make a name for themselves? Why did they do this? Well, it says it right here. It says, let us make a name for ourselves, make for ourselves a name. Otherwise, we will be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. They did this to avoid being scattered over the face of the whole earth. Now, this is, this is not a, a judgment. This is not an evaluation. This is not anything else. But I want you to understand a little bit of what's going on here. Um, as I look around, I see some family groups sitting in different places. And it is a joy to see family groups sitting together. Even Hal sitting, with, sitting close to his sister. It's amazing. You want your family to be together, don't you? 
In fact, for some of you, as your children have grown and they've had children of their own, your grandchildren, and then they went and moved away, how could they do that? We want to we wanna keep them together, don't we? Because we want the fellowship. We want the family. We want the unity. We want to be together. But you know, I've got four young men living in my house. Well, three and a half. One's not there very much. He's growing up. It's hard. But you know, my responsibility... My responsibility is to train them up to go out into the world and to live their life. Not to stay under my roof and under my control for the rest of their lives. And that's hard. That's not an easy thing. But it's what we're called to do. And so you can understand maybe just a little bit of this group. This is, a, this is a family group. Now, it's become a larger family group over several generations, but can you imagine the, the family gathering when Noah says, hey, let's all get together? Well, that's the whole earth we were talking about at that point. They didn't want to be scattered over the face of the earth. So is that a problem? Well, let me read you one other passage of Scripture. Here's what it says. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. A direct commandment from God in the beginning of creation was to fill the earth. It wasn't to gather up in one little town and build a tower and make a name for themselves. It wasn't sold as a rebellion to God directly. After all, the tower to heaven, as we talked about, could have just been trying to get closer to Him. But I want us to consider as you make choices each and every day, as you face the challenge of your free will looking at whether you'll do it your way or God's way, I want you to look at what the end result of this situation is. They ended up scattered anyway. God scattered them across the face of the earth. But it's worse than that. That's what God had instructed to begin with. But now, your family not only is scattered across the face of the earth, but you don't have a line of communication with them anymore. So, the end result. Originally, they would have been scattered, but able to talk with each other, able to come home and visit and share what's going on in their lives. Now, I don't have a picture of how to relate this. I really don't. I guess the closest thing I could say is God calls them into mission work and they go and they're in deepest, darkest Africa where there's no cell service and no internet and no anything else and you never get to hear anything from them. That would be about the closest thing I could say. But the situation at hand is they're scattered abroad here and they just can't communicate with each other. Physically, literally, they cannot communicate. They have to learn how to do that all over again because their languages are confused. Often, often our unfaithfulness causes more problems for us and more a more difficult road to do what we were supposed to do in the first place. And we need to stop and consider that ahead of time. You know what you need to do. I understand you may not want to do it. I I face those situations myself and I understand fully. There are times when I know what I need to do but I don't really want to do it. 
The thing is, I have learned from experience when I do it, God takes care of it and it isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. When I don't do it, it's doubly worse than what it would have been. Even in my imagination, it's worse than what my imagination thought it would be. Notice that God does credit them here in this passage with being able to do anything they purpose to do. But if we fail to purpose to do what God desires, He's likely to intervene and bring the walls down. So how do we apply this? You know, one of the things I want to encourage you, and I do, I try to encourage you each week with this, is how do you apply what God is saying? That's why I ask the question at the end of the service most Sundays. What are you going to do with what God has said to you? You need to apply it, otherwise it's of no value. Knowledge without action is of very little worth. How are you going to apply? Well, I guess question number one is, have we fulfilled our mandate in Genesis 1.28? Because that still falls on us. Have we fulfilled that mandate? Have we filled the earth? Well, I would say that all parts of the world are inhabited. I mean, we, we've, got, we've got people living on Antarctica. Not a lot, but you know, nothing grows down there. So there's probably plenty of people down there. They probably don't need a lot more. But there's not, there's not uninhabited places on the earth anymore. We've probably fulfilled that mandate in the original first intent. But what was the commandment? What was the mandate that God gave us there? It was to fill the earth and be in charge. To fill the earth and be in charge. So what is it that has filled the earth right now? Is it just about the physical bodies of people? Is that all God intended? Just, just multiply and make sure there's a lot of human bodies covering the face of the earth. God has always wanted a personal relationship with His creation. With all of His creation, but especially the pinnacle and prize of His creation, you and I. He wants that relationship. Does He have that covering the face of the earth? second question that we have to ask is who or what is in control because we were we were mandated to fill the earth and be in charge are we well none of the rest of the animal kingdom or anything else is in charge is it i don't know is it you tell me i lived in colorado for 10 years of my life I remember watching the news when they'd bring that poor little puppy dog that's at the pound and they'd say, if somebody doesn't adopt this poor little puppy dog, it's going to be put down. Who's in control then? Now, if you don't want that child, you can just go down to the clinic and get that taken care of. But you better do something about this little dog. Who's in charge? And then the last question relating to fill the earth and be in charge is what is mankind representing? What are we representing with how we live, with what we're doing, with who we are? We were created in God's image. Are we representing that? Or are we representing more of, of a creation approach, self and environment? Oh, well, God told us to take care of everything and take care of the environment, so we gotta, we got to put... The, yes, He did. I agree 100%. But who's in charge? What's in control? What is of value? What, is, what do you see in the world right now as being in control and in value, is it, is it human life? 
and the preciousness of that? Is that what everything focuses on God's pinnacle of creation, that God created life and it is valuable and, and it is worthy? Or is that just set aside because we have other causes that we want to make a big deal about? What are we building? That's what the question comes down to. What are we building? As I said, there are a lot of choices for us. We, we can try and be nation builders. We can try and be community builders. We can try and be those who rebel and tear down and try and rebuild and make something different. See, part of, part of this all comes from the sin that is within us, that nature of sin that, that resides in all of us. And I've watched it play out so many times, and, and where it really comes out is, is what we talked about in our youth this morning a little bit, is the, is the pride. Well, we want, we want something to, we want to make our mark, and we want it to be about what we've done. So yeah, this country's been fine for a while, but, but let's tear it down and let's us rebuild it and, and, and we, you know, put our name on it. Make a name for ourselves. It isn't about my name. It isn't about your name. It's about his name. Just want to break out in his name is wonderful. Is that what we're living for? Is that what we're building? What are we building? And specifically for us this morning, I will close with this. What is the foundation of the local church? What is to be the foundation of this body of believers that has gathered together to build the kingdom of God. The foundation is simple. It's a statement. It's a simple statement that Peter made. He was talking to his disciples and, and he said, who do men say that I am? And they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist or Elijah or one of the prophets. And he looked at them and he said, but, but who do you say that I am? And Peter filled with the Spirit of God at that moment, because that's what Jesus attributes it to, opens his mouth, as he always does, but this time he says something right on target, spot on. He said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In other words, you are the Messiah, you are the hope, you are the one who came to give us life and give it abundantly and eternally. You are the one upon which we will build. And Jesus said, you are right, Peter. And upon this rock, that statement, I will build my church. That's our foundation. That's what we're about. I love you all. I, I enjoy getting together and having fellowship with you. I love our times of study together. I love our times of worship together. I love our fellowships, whether it's, whether it's singing uh, old Western music with the Grand Ole Opry or doing a hee-haw show and having fun and laughing together and living life together. I love the sharing together. By the way, there's some zucchini out there. First come, first serve. But that's what family life is about. I love that. But here's the thing, folks. The foundation of the church is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's the foundation upon which we stand. And that's what we're to be building, is the church upon that foundation. We're to be out helping others Find that. What are we building? What are we investing our lives in? 
What will be the heritage that you leave when your life comes to an end on this earth? Part of it can be your family. Part of it can be the work that you have done in your jobs. But only if all of those things work together for the building of the kingdom of God. That's what it needs to be focused on. Whatever you're doing in your life, God can use that for the building of the kingdom of God. That's what we need to be investing our lives in. That's what he's called us to. And if we choose differently, that too, he can come and take away from us to bring us back to where we were supposed to be in the first place. But it might not be quite as good as what it originally would have been. They were scattered over the face of the earth because that's what God had commanded. But now they didn't have that communication ability. They lost. I don't want us to lose. I want us to have the fullness that God has promised us. Through the power, I want the victory. How about you? Let's pray. Father God, you are an awesome and mighty God and we praise you this day. Lord, I am so excited about who you are and what you're doing in my life and in the life of this church. And I pray that you would continue to reveal yourself daily to us. Show us the plans that you have for us. Plans to prosper us. Plans to use us. Plans to further us. Plans to change the world for the kingdom of God. Here we are, Lord. Use us. Take us. Make from us what only you can. Give us discernment and wisdom. Oh, we cry for wisdom that comes alone from you. We need that wisdom for understanding. Lord, you have given us free will to choose. But without your wisdom, our decisions become flawed. Give us wisdom, please, Lord so that we might understand fully the choices that we're making and the faithfulness that you're calling us to. Let us become the church standing on the solid rock, being faithful to you. Let us enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise that others might see you through our good works. Be glorified in the life, the faithful life of your people here. And right now, Lord, in this moment, there are some here who are needing you. They need the hope and the security and the promise that you have offered them. Lord, we realize that we are all sinners. And your word says the wages of sin is death and separation from your love. But it also says that you have given us a gift. The gift of God. Of salvation through Jesus Christ. We can be forgiven and have the promise of life full and abundant and eternal if we just choose to receive it. And there are some here this morning that this, you are calling for this to be their day of salvation, the day when they receive the free gift of forgiveness and of new life. Give them the wisdom and the courage to act upon that. Lord, give us all the wisdom and courage to act upon what you desire to do in our lives this day. Help us determine right now what we will do with what you have said. And receive the honor from our action now. As you invite us, Lord, to respond to your word 
here and now. Give us the assurance that you will bring it to be. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. This is a time of invitation. This is a time for you to decide what you're going to do with whatever it is God said specifically to you this morning. The altar is open. If you'd just like to come and pray, I encourage you, come, pray, talk to God. I will be here. A couple of our deacons will be here. If you're here this morning and you want to know if this can be your day of salvation, we would love to answer those questions and help you with that. Maybe you need to join this church family and become a part of what God is doing here. Whatever it is that God is saying to you, will you respond to him now in faith and honor him as you do? As we sing, you step out and come. Come just as you give you a few announcements this morning. Uh, Edith Holland's birthday, 90th birthday, is coming up pretty soon. So if you want to send her a card and celebrate with her and encourage her, that would be great. Uh, youth and adults will be leaving tomorrow for uh, rec week. They leave around 10 o'clock tomorrow. They'll be gone all week down at Windermere. So pray for them. Um, we do have some uh, touch-up painting this week that needs to be done around the church. So if you're able to paint and be willing to do that, uh, call the church office. And uh, deacons meeting is today uh, at 4 o'clock. What is that going to be? Any, any idea? Okay, Dave's room up on Same top. Same room as normal. Third floor. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then Celebrate Recovery uh, begins again this Tuesday night. So if you want to be a part of that, they meet in our fellowship hall. Let me just say, for our youth going and parents, so you know very clearly, we, we were originally looking at leaving a little bit earlier when we first got this going, but we will be meeting here at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and make sure they have some tennis shoes because Friday we're, we're doing a ropes course and they need tennis shoes for that. So it's going to be a, a great time. Uh, please, you've got an insert in your bulletin this morning of prayer requests for that week. We're looking forward to God doing some amazing and unbelievable things. Uh, it looks like uh, we're taking 20 kids and 7 adults. 
So pray for us adults especially, but pray for the kids too. Uh, it, it's going to be a great week, and we hope that uh, you will hear some great testimonies when we get back and, and see the impact that it's had on our, on our youth. All right? So Barry's going to close us in a word of prayer, and then we'll sing a chorus as we go out. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the, the words that Brother Willie shared with us this morning and the, and the songs that, that Brother Mike shared. We ask specifically that you be with our youth and, and leaders as they spend this week away from us, keep them safe. Might they have a, a wonderful spiritual time. But most of all, we thank you for your son, for it's in his name we pray. Amen. I love y'all. Have a great week.